So thank you uh, for having inviting me to present you. Uh, so the safety aspects uh, of melatoninergic drugs, and especially regarding the use as hypnotic drug in older age. Just dislike to remind you that in uh, Western European countries, uh, elderly represent, and when I say elderly, I say people m with more than 65 years old, in fact represent about one fourth of the population that account for more than half of the drug who are prescribed. And it has also been estimated that uh, in elderly patients, medication-related problems account for 10 to 30 percent of hospital admission, and that it may be the fourth or even the third leading cause of death. Now, the, um, the potential for adverse drug reaction is also a function of the number of drugs the subject is taking. It is estimated that about 6% have at least one adverse effect when the elders take two meds a day. It rises to 50% when elders take five different meds a day and up to 100% when they take eight or more different meds a day. And when you know that about two-thirds of elderly patients take five to 12 meds a day, uh, you understand the uh, scope of the drug safety issue in the elderly. So now, what about sleep medication use in the elderly? Uh, Professor Wade uh, uh, just mentioned that it is in France that we have a kind of uh, uh, re record, I will say. Uh, so this, uh, for this reason, I present here the result of a survey made uh, two year, no, five years ago. It was shown that, uh, in, at least in France, there was a regular use of sedative hypnotic drugs in about one third of, of elders more than 65, and about 40% of elders aged 80 or more. And despite this high consumption of uh, hypnotics in elderly patients, there are very few placebo control trials of pharmacological uh, effects in terms of efficacy and safety uh, for, uh, that, that are um, uh, done in patients having insomnia. Uh, just to mention, Crystal, uh, three years ago, made a kind of compendium of all of this uh, um, trial, and he found only 12, 12 studies who were investigated with, with a double-blind uh, placebo control design, uh, the effect of hypnotic drugs in uh, insomnia. So I will uh, just uh, detail the study that uh, Professor Wade Told you this is the, the meta-analysis from Glass published in the BNG uh, in 2005. Uh, in fact, at, at that time, he, the meta-analysis was done with all study performed with uh, hypnotic drugs in elderly patients uh, with control condition. It could be a placebo or it could be um, a reference drug. And you see that most of these patients were two. 2,400, more than two four, sorry, more than 200,000 patients, they were on Z drugs, Zaleplon, Zopiclone, or Zolpidem. So, and the other were on classical benzodiazepine drugs. So it could make um, odds ratio, meaning what is the, the chance to have at least one adverse event uh, when, ta when taking the drugs compared to subjects who were not taking the drugs. And you see that it's about five times more frequent to have a cognitive adverse event uh, when you take an hypnotic drug in this uh, population. For psychomotor, adverse event is 2.6, and daytime fatigue, uh, it's 3.8. So, and uh, in fact, with, uh, it is from this study that is derived the number of patients to treat and the, nerve, or, and the number of uh, patients to hurt. Uh, Professor Wade told you uh, before. Another concern is that it seems that the use of hypnotic is associated with death rate. In fact, um, the group Kripke is well known in sleep medicine because he's claiming uh, for years that it is very dangerous to use hypnotic drugs. Uh, this is last uh, last of his uh, study. Uh, very interesting study because it's a community study. Uh, there were more than uh, 25,000 subjects were screened during five years. And uh, very simply, he, 
he, uh, he made a survival analysis regarding the fact the subject was taking an hypnotic drug or not. And he find a kind of dose effect relationship. You see here. Uh, this is the number of pills the subject is taking a year. So and, and more than 100 pills, it's, it's one hypnotic drug every three days. It's, it's not, it's not a, a lot. And here, this kind of subject has five times more uh, risk to be deaf, in fact, in, the two, in a five years follow-up period. Of course, it's observed with Zolpidem and with Temazepam, but with all others, uh, hypnotic drug that was to die at that time. Um, now, what, of course, it does not mean causality. Uh, it means that uh, insomnia itself could lead to, to death more uh, rapidly. There are other studies showing you that. It could be that um, people who are insomniac have more severe disease, leading more, uh, more quickly to death. Uh, but what's also important as far as the, the, the speech here is concerned is that the effect, in fact, the differential effect when you take hypnotics or not is more marked in the more, uh, the, the more uh, older age group. Uh, here you see uh, the survival rate during five years with a patient taking hypnotics here and the converse curve with a uh, subject who are not taking hypnotic is here. But the younger, you see, the difference is really less marked. Now, what are the, the common uh, issues we have with uh, gabaragic hypnotic uh, drug in the elderly? You have ventilatory depression. The, these are nighttime adverse effect, effects, meaning that it happens during the night. Uh, ventilatory depression, anterograde amnesia, it's also, uh, as, as Professor uh, Wade mentioned, a reason why in clinical trial it's very difficult to have to see a subjective effect of, uh, of uh, a non-benzodiazepine drug when you compare it to a, a benzodiazepine, because people don't have, uh, don't remember that they have awakening. Uh, now, other things who happen are dizziness, loss of balance, and risk of force. I did not mention that, but in the glass uh, meta-analysis I showed you before, in fact, there were seven uh, severe adverse events. Mm -hmm. Of these seven uh, severe adverse events, six were night falls, with resulting in three cases of, uh, of, of broken bones. So meaning that it's really important to have a correct balance, that, that the drug is not impairing the balance when the older subject is waking up during the night. Now, more rare uh, side effects with uh, gabaragic drugs are nightmare, delirium, some hallucination, and drug-induced sleep-related complex behavior that could be very spect spectacular, such as sleep eating um, or uh, even sleep driving, there is a case we described. Now, next morning, residual effects are seen with drugs having a long uh, half-life, not with all, and especially Z, Z drugs are not concerned, perhaps except Zopiclone, but you, with a prolonged sedation, uh, you, you have, of course, an impairment in psychomotor performance the, the, the day after the drug intake. And um, also, the, the issue with long-term use of gabaragic drugs are a discontinuation effect, meaning that you can have a rebound insomnia when you stop the, the, the drug and also a, a liability to a dependence. Normally, all these drugs are marked to be, uh, in fact, prescribed during a very short period, a couple of weeks, depends from one country to another. Uh, but in, in the real life, in fact, these patients are taking drugs for months, even years. Now, what about the melatonin receptor agonist? So I will skip very quickly this slide because we, uh, my Professor Ward and Quera Salva speak about already. So I will focus on melatonin uh, prolonged release or circadin and rameltheon. Now, some words about rameltheon because it is interesting on a conceptual point of view, I will say. Um, so. There are no nighttime adverse events who have been described with uh, rameltheon. For example, uh, the drug was used in 
patients having sleep apnea or uh, COPD, and there are really no uh, respiratory depressant effect. Uh, no balance impairment. One study in uh, um, older insomniac and another in young subject, you don't, f uh, don't f um, see anything. Now, for the next morning, residual effect is, it is not so clear because the first studies uh, were uh, marked by uh, Takeda <laughs> and were, do, do not see any residual effect. Uh, now, there are two studies who cast doubt about this uh, because but these two studies were done in healthy volunteers. It is also possible the problem of where do we have to test our drug for the side effect, in healthy volunteers or in insomnia patients? Because the two populations could probably not react in the same way. Uh, in fact, um, this is uh, the impaired highway driving performance uh, was, I would say, still uh, important because uh, it, it was approximately the equivalent of when you are drinking two beer. So it, it, it's quite uh, important and, and, and normally uh, the drug sh sh should have, uh, in fact, you have to be very careful if you take this drug. It, it, normally it, it means that. Um, now, the study have also uh, have, um, done in young, healthy subjects, so difficult to, to say what exactly uh, is the issue here. What we know now about Rameltheon is that it has a metabolite. In fact, Rameltheon in itself, so only two hours of uh, half-life, but the metabolite was active, that acting also as an MT1, MT2 agonist, probably as also 5-HT, uh, effect and is very the, the half life is prolonged, so it could come from this metabolite. Now, long term effects are never seen with Rameltheon. There, no withdrawal symptoms, no rebound insomnia, uh, no abuse liability. So they have tested that in a special um, population of drug abuse, and in fact, does not lead to uh, abuse. Uh, they have one in one trial, six month trial with 16 milligrams from Rameltheon. It's double the dose. You, 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 uh, you, um, who the drug is market, you have uh, an increase in the prolactin levels in women. So it was statistically significant, but on the clinical point of view, it was considered as non-clinically significant. Now I come to circadine, so uh, I will go through. Uh, so this is the list of the study that were performed uh, regarding uh, circadine. Uh, in fact, uh, our group was involved in some of these studies, most the pharmacodynamic study, when we study the effect of circadian on sleep or on, uh, for example, balance, driving, etc. So just mention what particular with circadian is that all the studies were performed in primary insomniac patients who were aged more than 55 years, excepting the two, the two here. Uh, and when we did uh, the f um, crossover study with healthy volunteers, they were also uh, more than 55 years old. Next slide. Uh, so wha what all these studies tell us. So first, there's a very few side effects. In fact, there with, with circadian, uh, here it's about uh, a half of the patient were exposed to uh, circadine versus 37% uh, of patients exposed to uh, placebo. Uh, now, um, if you express, in fact, uh, you, you remember in, in some study, patients were exposed during six months, in other study, during one year. So, uh, a better way to represent the, 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 the adverse event who are coming with the drug is to express it by rate of patient with adverse event per 100 patient treat a week. And in this case, you see that you have less, in fact, patient affected by uh, adverse event with uh, uh, circadine than with placebo. So all, all you can explain that. Uh, in fact, you, you have to remember these are patients, meaning that when the clinician is, 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 is asking for adverse event, he will also include in this adverse event some 
things that are related to the illness. And uh, so this is what we, we, we have with, with the adverse event on placebo. Now, if you cure the illness, you will have less of this adverse event. And if the drug itself doesn't cause any adverse events, of course, you will have less adverse events with, with the drug. So what were these adverse events? Headache, back pain, pharyngitis, asthenia. So in less than 2% of the global population, uh, patient on uh, circadian or on placebo. So this is one of the pharmacological studies we performed. Uh, just to show you that circadian does not alter sleep architecture. This is the REM sleep duration here. Uh, baseline treatment during the early renault or late renault, we see uh, exactly the same amount of REM sleep. Here you have, regarding non-REM sleep, we make uh, a spectral analysis because it's a more, I would say, uh, specific or sensitive way to see if a drug is, is uh, as an effect on non-REM sleep. And you see again placebo uh, and um, circadine does not differentiate. So it means that the drug is really not affecting uh, sleep architecture despite having an effect, for example, on uh, sleep onset latency. Oops. Now for postural stability, uh, so study in healthy volunteers, all the healthy volunteers. Uh, so you see here that um, we have compared circadine to zolpidem, 10 milligram. And here you have the effect of zolpidem. So these are two conditions. A is with the eyes closed and B is with the eyes open. And this is uh, one and a half hour after drug intake and here four hour after, after drug intake. So a very huge effect of uh, zolpidem, that's what, what we expected. But here in violet, you have circadine, there's no effect on uh, postural instability, exactly as um, Ramel Theon in the other study. Now, this is for um, the driving simulator. Uh, in this particular case, we, the drug, the, the test was done two hours after drug intake. So it's very unusual to take an hypnotic and then, and then go to, to drive two hours after. But it was to be sure that we have an effect. It's a kind of positive control. You see that with Zolpidem, the number of collisions are increased. In fact, all the parameters were disturbed with Zolpidem after two hours. We take this one because it's, it's, it's more impressive. So um, people on Zolpidem had more uh, collision. And you see here that circadine does not affect even two hours uh, after intake, does not affect driving. Uh, of course, the next morning, this is the next morning, uh, you have uh, the, the effect of Zolpidem disappear. That's what it's usually seen in the literature. Now, um, we make also uh, um, neurocognitive battery tests. It's a CDR, Cognitive Drug Research uh, Assessment. This is one of the results because it's very boring. You have always the same kind of result. You have a uh, deleterious effect of Zolpidem one hour after intake, four hours after intake, even more here. In this particular case, this is the digit vigil digit vigilant test when we are asking to subject to um, push, push on a button when certain digits are appearing on the screen. And this is the number, the percentage of false detection. So, uh, and this is, com this is a change from baseline, so you have more of this uh, false detection. Sorry, it's the correct detection, the, the converse. You have less of this correct detection with uh, Zolpidem. Now, another test we did is the RiverMet test. It's a memory test, a particular memory test, because we are uh, really telling a story to the subject before uh, he's going to sleep. And then we are asking uh, him to recall the story the, with the more details he, he remembers. And so uh, the end point is the number of recalled elements. So we did that just after drug intake. So meaning that the encoding is done with the influence of the drug. You, you, you see that with Zolpidem, there is an encoding difficulty. So the, he's not, the subject is not uh, completely um, 
encoding all the story. And you see that next morning, it's even worse with Zolpidem. Uh, and you see circadian does not affect so the encoding and also the retrieval, next morning retrieval. So this is important because, as you know, uh, that um, sleep is, seems to be involved in the memory processes. It could mean that the study was not designed for that, but Zolpidem is, in fact, um, uh, contract the memory consolidation. Uh, we, we have other data with benzodiazepine drugs who sh who showing that with more specific tests. But in this case, it could explain why uh, the number of, of elements uh, recalled are less uh, in, in the morning. But whatever the picture, you see that circadine probably uh, has no effect on uh, memory, on sleep-related memory consolidation. And finally, this uh, picture comes from clinical studies. Um, you know, there was a run out uh, period during which the, per, the subject had placebo. So it's a very convenient way to see if they are uh, rebound insomnia or uh, withdrawal effect. We don't see any of these uh, things with uh, circadine. Uh, and here is the, pr that was the primary, one of the primary and point quality of sleep. You see also that the day after, the, the, the effect of circadian persistence, and even two weeks after. So at the end of the runout period, you, you still have an effect, meaning that the drug is really not subjected to uh, a rebound effect or withdrawal symptoms. So this will be my last slide, this comparison between what you have, uh, the most important uh, side effect you have with GABA agonist compared to melatonin -dishic agonist. So balance impairment risk of force, in, with GABA agonist, uh, some of these more rare uh, effects. With melatonin agonist, we have seen that sleep architecture is preserved, at least with circadine, because we were also involved in a multicenter study with uh, Rameltheon. Uh, it was a six month study with PSG every month approximately. And in this case, Rameltheon systematically decreased, in fact, slow wave sleep and tend to increase. Uh, stage two sleep. So in this respect, it seems that Rameltheon uh, looks more, looks like a classical benzodiazepine drug. Uh, no, no respiratory depressant effect with Rameltheon. Circadine, it was not tested, but uh, you can trust me uh, when I say that probably there will surely no uh, effect on, 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 on the, on respiratory during sleep. Um, here, with GABA drugs, you have uh, prolonged sedation with long half-life compounds, impairment of memory functioning. With melatonin drug, certainly not with circadine, could be with Rameltheon. And then long-term effects, discontinuous effects, dependence liability, and cognitive effects with uh, benzodiazepine drugs. You don't find any of the effects with uh, melatonin drugs. Uh, Rameltheon, was shown not to, to have a boost liability. Circadine was not tested in this design, but probably, or even surely, you don't have any abuse liability with uh, circadine, uh, as with um, uh, all melatoninergic drugs, I will say. Uh, no withdrawal symptom, no rebound insomnia, and some, uh, no endocrinologic alteration, uh, is accepting uh, again Rameltheon with uh, the prolactin uh, level. So to summarize, it's clear that melatonin agonists are safer than uh, GABA A agonists. I think I have uh, convinced you. Thank you.